In this video, we're going to look at the common ion effect on molar solubility. We will use a practice problem to demonstrate that the common ion effect will lower solubility and we're going to do that by looking at the side-by-side -side comparison of molar solubility of barium iodate in pure water versus in 0.20 molar of sodium iodate. To answer this question of what is common ion effect, let's look at an example which is barium iodate BaIO3-2. Now we can write out this dissociation equation which is basically barium iodate breaking into its cation Ba2+, and anion, iodate ion, 2IO3 minus. That 2 in front of iodate ion came from that 2 in the subscript of barium iodate. Basically, it just means that we have two groups of iodate ion. So what happens when we add our barium iodate solid in aqueous sodium iodate, for example? Well, sodium iodate contains sodium and iodate ion. So that means the common ion that is present here is going to be the iodate ion. Now, recalling from our knowledge on Le Chatelier's principle, what do you think will happen to the equilibrium if we increase the concentration of iodate ion, which is on the right-hand side of the equation? According to Le Chatelier, the position of equilibrium is going to move to counteract the change since we have more iodate ion in order to decrease, which is counteracting, the additional iodate ion, the equilibrium is going to move in reverse reaction, which is to the left, and that means we're going to have precipitation. That means we're going to form more barium iodate solid. So what does that mean in terms of barium iodate solubility? If you follow the explanation, that means the molar solubility of barium iodate is going to decrease due to the common ion effect. Well, is this true? Well, don't just take my word for it. Let's do an actual calculation with numbers. Let's say we're given this question. To calculate the molar solubility of barium iodate in 0.20 molar of sodium iodate, we're also given the KSP of barium iodate, which is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9. To calculate the molar solubility of barium iodate, we're going to need the ice table. Since we can't measure the concentration of a solid, which is our barium iodate, we're going to totally ignore it in our ice table. We're only going to focus on the concentration of the aqueous portion, which is the barium and iodate ions. So for our I, which is the initial concentration, we have 0.2 molar for iodate ion, which comes from that 0.2 molar of sodium iodate. And then initially, we don't have any concentration of barium ion because initial is before our barium iodate starts to dissolve. So initially, there's no barium ion, but we have 0.2 molar of iodate ion, which came from that sodium iodate solution. As for the change in concentration, after barium iodate dissolves, we're going to get 1x for the concentration of barium ion and 2x for the concentration of iodate ion. For every one mole of barium iodate, we get one mole of barium ion. That's why we add 1x. But for every one mole of barium iodate, we get two moles of iodate ion. And that's why we add 2x. So the number of x that we're adding basically just depends on the coefficient that we have in front of those terms. Now, as for the equilibrium, it's basically just initial plus change of concentration. And for barium ion, it would be x. For iodate ion, it would be 0.20 plus 2x. We're now ready to find the molar solubility. So to do that, we're going to write out the KSP expression. KSP is the solubility product constant, which means it's the product of the concentration of the two ions, which is Ba2 plus and our iodate. Now, don't forget that 2 that's in front of iodate, we're going to raise that to the power of 2 because of that coefficient of 2. Now, we're going to plug in the KSP that's given, which is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9. And then for the barium ion, it's going to be x. And then we have 0.20 plus 2x for our iodate ion. Now, don't forget to square that whole thing because the expression for KSP is barium ion concentration times iodate ion concentration to the power of 2. So don't forget to raise the entire expression to the power of 2. Now we could square out the term for the iodate ion, or we can make our life easier 
by just simplifying it by saying KSP is so small, it's 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Since it's so small, that additional plus 2x is going to be negligible. So basically, we can just ignore it. So we can simplify the equation so that now we get 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9 is equals to x times 0 0.2 square. Now this is more manageable and then if we square out the 0 0.2, we get 0 0.04 and now we can solve for x. So we just divide both sides with 0 0.04 and that will give us x is equals to 3.7 times 10 to the negative 8. Now remember, one mole of barium iodate is going to give us one mole of barium ion, which is x. Since we have already calculated our x, basically, the molar solubility of barium iodate in 0 0.2 molar of sodium iodate is 3.7 times 10 to the negative 8 molar. Again, don't forget the unit because the unit for molar solubility is the same unit for molarity, which is capital M or moles per liter. I've done a video that calculated the molar solubility of barium iodate in pure water. The link is in the description box below. I've summarized the whole thing on the left hand side. So we have the summary of calculation for molar solubility of barium iodate in pure water. And then on the right hand side is basically what we have just gone through. So now you can see that the molar solubility of barium iodate is 3.7 times 10 to the power of negative 8 molar in 0 0.2 molar sodium iodate. And in pure water, it's 7.2 times 10 to the power of negative 4. 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 is larger than 3.7 times 10 to the negative 8. So therefore, the presence of common ion actually reduce the molar solubility. So this proves that the presence of common ion, which in our example is iodate ion, reduce the solubility of our solute, which is barium iodate. So with that, we're done talking about the common ion effect on molar solubility. Here are the two videos that I've handpicked for you. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. Your support means a lot to me.